Hey there. So, we're out in the Peak District again. Um, weather is as beautiful as it always seems to be up in the Peak District. Um, so, I'm heading up to Bleaklow Moors, um, which is just off Snake Road, Snake Pass. And uh, the plan is a bit of a uh, Halloween wild camp. Um, but also, uh, I'm going to be starting a, a new thing, uh, a new little series. And that little series I'm attempting will be to visit as many crash sites, airplane crash sites, in the British Isles as I can. Starting with the, the uh, B-29 uh, bomber that crashed. Uh, high shelf, near high shelf, and uh, so we're going to have a look around there, um, talk a little bit about the history of it, what happened, um, and uh, yeah, have a look around that and then do a bit of a wild camp. As you can see, the it's just as boggy as all hell up here, so this uh, should be fun. Ugh. Yep, I've uh, I've got my rucksack loaded out, my trusty uh, Sierra Designs large rucksack. It's the one that like, looks like a baby ed baby elephant on, on my back. I've got a lot of my winter gear in here. Well, to be fair, it's not even it's not packed to the rafters. It's actually cinched down quite a lot. Um, it's actually quite mild. Um, I think uh, it's about 15 degrees or something. So you know, for the end of October. That's pretty crazy. Um, anyway, I'll stop uh, stop waffling on now. Do a bit of hiking, and then um, let's go and have a look at this uh, plane crash site. Boeing RB-29 Superfortress, named Overexposed, and also known as the Bleaklow Bomber, crashed on 3rd of November 1948. The aircraft left RAF Scrampton near Lincoln at about 10.15am and headed towards the US Air Base at Burntwood near Warrington. They were carrying wages for the Burntwood Air Base. The money survived the fire and was recovered at the crash site by the American military police. At around 11am the aircraft hit the ground at 610 metres above the sea level, 300 metres northeast of the summit of higher shelf stones and it was engulfed in flames. The pilots were flying by instruments due to the low cloud cover and thought they had cleared the peak district. There were 11 crew members and two military passengers on board overexposed, all of whom sadly lost their lives in the crash. Large parts of the aircraft remain on site, including the duplex, clone engines, wing sections, fuselage sections, undercarriage and gun turrets. Mini 
graveyard. sunset. I think that's going to last much longer. So I need to, I need to try and find somewhere soon because that sun's going down. Now I think um, I think I might just have to battle with the wind a little bit. somewhere get the tent pitched and then uh, yeah I'll come back to you time it's kind of shielded a little bit more shielded a little bit more behind this uh, this rock so I've got to get the uh, ground sheet down there
light. I think, whoop, <laughs> I think we've finally got it pitched up. So, uh, let's start now. Need to get into this tent. ASAP. Ah. Whew. That was, that was a mission to try and get this tent up. Um, I finally did it, didn't help. I was, <clears throat> I was doing it in the dark as well, but it's uh, gonna be a gusty one. So I had to move it from the original place that I pitched it um, because it was, it was, it was buckling. Um, and I, yeah, I don't think it would have lasted the night. So <laughs> I moved it to a slightly more sheltered spot. Um, it's right next to the path, but I, there's nothing I can do about it. No one's gonna be coming along now. Um, it's actually quite warm. It's just just this wind now, um, so it's going to be an interesting little test for the uh, meteor. So we'll see uh, we'll see how she holds up in the wind. Uh, you can see this going about, so you can see how, how windy it is, and it's it's just, it's gusts really. It's just gusts of winds. This is this is this is okay, but yeah, I keep getting these these quite heavy gusts. I think probably 20, 25 miles an hour, probably maybe the odd one of those. But um, I think that's supposed to continue throughout the night, so it is what it is. Um, I'm just about to cook some food and um, then I'll, uh, I'm going to have a beer and then I'm going to just check on all the guys and just make sure that they're, they're all sorted. Um, yeah, so that's me for now. So the uh, the wind is a rocking, as you can hear. The steak is on the go, and uh, not a bit controversially, I've had to close these doors. And I'm going to open it, open it in a minute to get some um, air and sort of here. But it's just if I open that, it just seems to lose a bit of its uh, a bit of its rigid rigidity. But anyway, it seems to be holding up okay for the moment. She's doing a sterling job. Let's hope she carries on throughout the night. Bless her. Uh, it's about to have a, um, a beer. This is a new one. This is uh, uh, it's just come out. Um, Northern Monk. Um, don't know where, how well you can see it. Oh, there you go. It's a bit better. Northern Monk. This is a hazy IPA, um, and it's called Heathen. So for this time of year, it's pretty pretty apt. So um, uh, yeah, 7.2 hazy, juicy, tropical. So I'm looking forward to opening that and seeing it. It's got pictures on the can of, I don't know whether you can see, of people burning stuff, uh, yeah, lots of carnage going on, so perfect for Halloween. Got my uh, pumpkin LEDs up, um, yeah, sad, sad in it. Um, anyway, uh, I'm going to carry on cooking the steak, so I will uh, catch you later. Um, made it through. <laughs> it was a, uh, a blustery for the whole night. Um, wind was was pounding, um, yeah, on and off um, quite heavily at times. And yeah, it's still still going now. Um, but yeah, the tent's still here, so all good. Um, and uh, yeah, held it held it well. Um, so plan for today. I'm just going to have a coffee. It's, um, it's actually daylight savings, so I've got an extra hour of sleep. Well, I say an extra hour of sleep, but I didn't sleep partic particularly well uh, because of the wind. But um, yeah, I make myself a coffee and then um, I've got a little route planned for today. Um, first though, I think I'm going to go back to the crash site and just get some more shots there. Um, and um, because there was a few people there yesterday, I didn't get all the shots that I really wanted to. I'm going to go do that and then um, crack 
on and finish off the rest of the hike. Side now and have a, another look there, and then um, yeah, I'll end up um, back in It's a bit better when you when she turned the corner. My lips are gone numb. That wind's really cold. shielding down there. Had a nice little hike back uh, through the valleys. Um, the weather's you know, naff. Um, oh, honestly, like <laughs> I almost got to the end without having some kind of boggy bit. It's too bad. No, it's not too bad. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, but the weather's been a bit rubbish really, but that's fine. 
Um, but yeah, I uh, did what I needed to accomplish today uh, and yesterday to see the, um, the bomber site and uh, got a wild camp in, although it was very windy, but it was still good fun. Um, got a little bit of hiking today. Um, and then, um, yeah, I've got to think about the next um, aircraft ruin site that uh, I'm going to visit. There is another one um, on the peaks not too far from um, where the one I went today was. Um, but uh, um, I, uh, yeah, I didn't really have enough time to go there today. Um, so maybe that's uh, one for the next time. I need to scope it out a bit and uh, do a bit of research on it. Right, hopefully the car's still there and I'll, uh, I'll catch you, uh, as they say, on the next one.